All right, folks, welcome to your last calculus review video of the year here from Yak Math Videos. Um, today, this is for your final uh, final exam. Today, we're brought to you by in-house sponsors of Caldi Coffee, um, Sometime Organic and Fair Trade, Quaker Oats, Select Starts, Protein Instant Oatmeal. Clearly, Mr. Yak doesn't use this enough. Three different types of running gels in the house. First off, Hammer Gel, Cliff Shot, Mr. Yak's personal favorite, and Goo Tri Berry. Yum, yum, yum. Also, one of Mrs. Yak's favorite sponsors, Crystal, Crystal Light Energy, uh, Wild Berry, Artificial Flavor. Mr. Yak does tell Mrs. Yak all the time, sweetheart, this is a bunch of chemicals. Um, then Mrs. Yak gets mad and uh, Mr. Yak says, well, sweetheart, I think it's fine because Mr. Yak doesn't want to be in the doghouse. Anyway, moving on, folks, here with our Calc Review. I also want to send a special shout out to both Max and uh, Jacob and anyone else that nominated me for the lovely Teacher of the Year. Thank you. You all get special brownie points. All right, folks, on your review here these are going in order um, number three some of these we have done in class so I'm just showing you the breakdown here there's the answer to number three all right when you have the square root of uh, anything as X is going to infinity just worry about the highest power and break it down all right what is F prime of two folks take the derivative of low D high minus high D low over low squared quotient rule and then plug in two for X Number eight, folks, we uh, we take the derivative of that. Got to use the product rule and then plug in pi over two. All right. So I think we're looking for the tangent line. Is that right here? So we get the slope is e to the first. And uh, we know we're going through um, x equals pi over two. So I plug pi over two in for x and I also get pi over two for y. So that's the equation of the tangent line. All right, equation of the tangent line. Uh, find the slope of that function and evaluate it at that x. Here's the next one, folks. Simply take the derivative. All right. I wouldn't really make you simplify it from there. All right. If I want to know what f prime of x is, which I believe I missed there, that should be like f prime of x. Uh, plug in co root cosine x in for t. All right. Um, that's really cosine x to the one half. Power rules, you know, power to power says you multiply the powers. Then you got to take the derivative. You got to take the derivative because that's not simply x. You got to take the derivative of uh, square root of cosine x, and it breaks down like that. All right. Here on this next one, now you could use L'Hopital's rule because you have a zero over zero case. So you could take the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, and then plug two in. This is how we did it, though, in the uh, second quarter. No matter how you do this, you should get two over three. I believe we used lower tiles in class when we did this one. And moving on, folks. Uh, number 16, I would definitely use lower tiles. And then you get uh, not to zero over zero. Remember, you cannot use lower tiles if you get uh, anything that's not uh, zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Plug in zero for x. You guys need to know that cosine of zero and secant of zero is one. All right, next one, use L'Hopital's twice, okay? On 19, uh, use the quotient rule to find the derivative. And this is what we get. You can pause this whenever you need to. All right, find the second derivative. You're just gonna use the product rule a few times. All right, use the product rule a few times. Remember, derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. Negative goes through. Here we're taking the derivative um, we've got the, of that uh, function was defined by that integral. Then you plug in x to the third in for theta. Then you take the derivative of x to the third, which actually I did a boo-boo there. As you can see, folks, this should remain as sine. All right, that is gonna remain as sine. You just take the derivative of uh, x to the third. All right, so that's my mistake there. 22, we're gonna figure out the C a value of C that makes f of x continuous at every x. So plug three in for x and both and solve for C. All right, 
Definitely expect that one. That one's gonna be early on day one. So now next one here, take the derivative. All right, quotient rule. When you take the derivative of the high, that's you know e to the secant x squared, then you have to take the derivative of secant x squared, which is, involves the chain rule. All right, a lot going on there. Which one is involved? 125 here, folks. Put e to the x down below, then you have a low per tals. On 27, take the derivative. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. All right. You can pause this whenever you need to, folks. This is just a lot of good answers. A lot of good answers here. Next one, I'm going to use low tals. You're going to use low tals twice. You get 0 over 0 a few times. Ultimately, you're going to get 16 over 2, which is 8. Again, cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. Uh, tangent of 0 is 0. All right, low d high over high or minus high d low over low squared gives you this. Next one, take the derivative. This is pretty, uh, you know, you, you have the product rule here. Not bad. Make sure when you take the derivative of cosine, that's negative sine uh, 2x, and you have to take the derivative of 2x, which is 2. Okay, take your time there. Derivatives are first day. Uh, again, on 44, we want f of x continuous everywhere. So simply plug 2 in for x, solve for k. That's a pretty easy one. We did the one with a and b in class. That one's a little bit more challenging. Again, you could have two of those. Guys, simply look to see which has the highest power. They have the same power, so it's just the ratio of the leading coefficients. 4 over negative 1. Here, uh, we can factor. Okay, I mean, it's technically 0 over 0, so you can use low per tals, but just factor and cancel and plug 2 in. Negative 3 over 2. Um, take the derivative here. This one's pretty self-explanatory. And I made another boo-boo. It should be secant squared of 3x. Right, I did take the derivative of three x. That's why six is out there. But that should be a three x. All right, then take the derivative here, bring down that two. Four times two is eight. All right, moving on. Find f prime of five if f of x is that. It's just a nice application of the chain rule. Then plug in five. You get three over root sixteen, which is three fourths. F prime of x, folks, you take the derivative. Nah, pretty self-explanatory. Everything looks good there. I did originally make a boo-boo, but changed to that. All right, I would factor, plug negative four in, find that limit. Again, you could uh, you could use, could you use L'Hopital's there? Yep, you get zero over zero, I believe. Here, use L'Hopital's, you get one over x times, uh, or divided by the derivative of the denominator. Then one over x would, you know, that x would go to the bottom, and uh, if it's going towards infinity, it's basically one over infinity, which is zero. Also know that, one over infinity, 10 over infinity, it's the same thing, it's zero. Um, negative 10 over infinity is still zero. Here we're using implicit differentiation, dy over dx, okay? So um, you take the product rule here, derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times derivative of the second. Anytime you take the derivative of y, you need to add in, um, y prime. Then derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's why it is two on the outside, uh, x, y, and then you got to add in that y prime equals three. Move the y prime, put the y primes together and factor out. So you basically, you know, factor out the y prime and then divide by x squared plus two x, y. Okay. Next one here, find the uh, equation of the line that is tangent to that curve at 9, 3. Take the derivative and then plug in 9 for x. You know that it's going through 3, so it's you get the slope of 1, 6. That's a pretty easy equation. Here, I believe we're looking what for absolute, you know, or looking for the min and max on that interval. Take the derivative, set it equal to 0. 4 is outside the interval of negative 1 to 2. 0 is in. So plug in all those into the original. Anytime you're looking for min and max, always plug it into the original. All right, we get our max there and our min at 2, negative 10. And we're moving on. This is, we're going to make this video just short of 15 minutes. This first one might take more than one. We will see. Um, let's take the derivative, quotient rule. A lot going on. A lot going on there. Wow. You know, because when you... Uh, you know, you have low, D high, and that is wrong. 
because that should be minus high D low. So this will present a little bit of a problem right there, which actually presents more of a problem now. Uh, I think that's right. Anyway, wow, plenty of errors in this video. Please know, please know that. All right. Um, so want to find the equation of the tangents line at x equals two to that curve. So take the derivative, then plug two in, you get natural log two plus one. And then when you plug two in to figure out the y value, it's two natural log two. Okay, just plug it in there. That's the y value, which is weird. The slope is also a weird number there. Natural log two plus one. And then the x value is two as it said. All right. Number 80, low d high minus high d low over low squared, quotient rule. You get subtract correctly there. You have a negative times a negative, which will cancel out, so make it all positive. There you go. Finally, the derivative, so you're just gonna plug in x squared into t, so you're gonna cube it, and then you gotta take the derivative of x squared, which is two x, and it simplifies to that. All right, 81, that was 81, let's keep Going 80 here. Find the general antiderivative. Don't forget about the constant of integration. If f of x is the equation, capital F of x is the antiderivative. Number 100 here, folks. We're finding um, local max. We're basically, we're finding everything here. Um, absolute min and max. Uh, when is it increasing, decreasing? So find the derivative set equal to zero. The critical values are negative one and two. So you have a local max. Again, we're if a critical value is a negative one, two, then I have three different intervals there. Find a test number, so negative two, zero, and three work, and then you plug that into the derivative, see what the derivative is doing. If the derivative is positive, then the function is increasing. If the derivative is negative, then it's decreasing. When it goes from increasing to de decreasing, then you have a local max. When it goes from decreasing to increasing, you have a local min. Then plug those x values into the original to find what your uh, local min and maxes are. And then for absolute min and max, um, on the interval negative three to three, you're gonna use negative three and three, and you're also gonna use those critical values because they're in the interval. And that's what we get there. It's a long question, number 100. Done plenty, like 103, plug in root x, and then take the derivative of it. Plug that in for t, and then take the derivative. And then evaluate it at uh, f prime of eight, or you know, f prime of e to the eight. Plug that in. Remember, this is from Algebra 2, folks. Move that 4 up. Or you want to think, first off, uh, scratch that. Natural log of e to the 8th is 8, and a quarter of 8 is 2. Use substitution, folks. Let u be that. x to the 4th minus 1. So 1 fourth du is what you want to substitute, have something substitute in for x to the 3rd dx. You want to plug something in for that. All right. So we get that. Uh, First off, a fourth of two thirds is one sixth. Then plug what uh, uh, you know x to the fourth minus one in for u. And then that constant of integration. Simply take the antiderivative here. It's pretty again. You're gonna think about taking the derivative. What would I do to take the derivative? It'd be e to the negative two x. Um, so the antiderivative would still be that. And then instead of multiplying by negative two, I'm going to divide by negative two. All right. Don't forget about that constant of integration. And about one more minute for this video. We've got an optimization problem. Again, make sure to read what's, you know, I believe that's that's either 110 or 111. I can't even read that. Um, you have 2,400 feet per perimeter. So solve for y. You want to maximize the area. Um, take the derivative, set it equal to 0, 600, 600, and then 1,200 there. Absolute min of max of that on that interval. Take the derivative, set it equal to 0. Uh, the critical value of zero is outside, so plug in those three to find your absolute min and max. All right, folks, this is going to be the end of our first video. Our second video here will have the rest of the answers.